What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to set up an Android emulator and create our first app with Flutter. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to set up an Android emulator and then create our first app with Flutter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we installed Flutter and all the things. In this video, we're going to create our first app and also create an Android emulator to run it on. We're also going to run it as a web app as well. I'll show you how to do both in this video. So head over to Visual Studio Code and let's come up here to Terminal and click on New Terminal. And I'm just going to create a directory. So I'm going to go MKDIR and I want to put this in the C drive and I'm just going to call this Flutter apps or something like that. And that's where we're going to save all of our Flutter apps going forward. So now I want to CD change directory into that Flutter apps directory. And you can see there we are. So now we just want to create an app. So to do that, we type in Flutter, create, and then just name our app. And let's just call this Firster, firstly, whatever. Uh, just a first app doesn't matter. We're not going to do much with this app. And you can see it's creating the app for us. And uh, there we go. So we can type in LS and we can see we now have this firstly directory. So now let's come up here to the top and go file open folder. And we want to navigate to that C drive and that flutter app directory. There we go. And then our firstly click on that and then just click select folder. And this will import all of that into Visual Studio Code. Now, our Flutter apps are always located in the lib directory. So we can click here and we see there it is main.dart. So if we want to click this and take a look at this, I don't know why this is so big. We could resize that. Uh, here's our app. Now I'm not going to go into any of this stuff in this video. This is just the starter app that they always add when you create a new app. And this is actually a working app. This creates a little counter app. And in fact, we can run it by coming down here and you see right down here, if we click on windows, we could say where we want to run this thing. So I want to run it in the Chrome web browser. So I'll click that. Now we can come over here to this main.dart file, right click and click run without debugging. And this will launch this thing, fire it up, and it should open automatically in a minute or two in Chrome. Now it takes a second for this to get started and get going. That's just the way Flutter is. But uh, if you wait just a second, it should pop right up. There we go. And this opened in a Chrome browser all by itself over here. We can also open this in Firefox if we want, uh, just by popping in this localhost colon 57492, and then the number sign. Or you could just run it in Chrome. Either way, this will open the app. And you can see here's our app. So this is the basic app that's been created for us. And you can see you've pushed the button zero times, we can come down here to this little plus, and we can hit it a few times. And when we do it updates the counter. So not a very sophisticated app, but it is a working actual app. And you can see it runs perfectly fine in a web browser. That's the cool thing about Flutter. They, the apps work in web browsers, they work in phones, they work in all different operating systems, and it's really cool. So, okay, that's great. But what we really want to do is run this in an Android emulator, see how it looks on a phone. So if we come down here, we click there, we see we just have web browser options. How do we get a little phone to pop up? Well, we need an Android emulator. So we need to head over to Android Studio. We installed that in the last video. If you didn't see that video, check it out. I'm just going to go to my Windows Start menu and start to type in Android and the Android Studio thing pops right up. Go ahead and click that. And here we are, Android Studio. Come down here to More Actions and we want the Virtual Device Manager. And here we want to create a device. And here we can come through and pick what phone you want to emulate. So I'm just going to come down here and uh, I don't know, Nexus 6 maybe, something like that. Click Next. And now you're going to want to download it. Now I've already downloaded it. So it says R here, but it will say download. You just click that and a little thing will pop up. If you get a little error message over there that says something about virtualization, it means likely that virtualization isn't turned on on your computer. So you're gonna have to restart your computer and go into your system BIOS, 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 I say that BIOS settings and uh, enable virtualization. You'll have to Google it for your specific machine, Intel, AMD, whatever you've got is going to be different. So I'll let you do that, but we don't have any errors there. So we're good to go. Click next. And like I said, this will download and install that emulator. But like I said, I've already done that. So uh, one thing you want to do is come down here to graphics where it says automatic, change this to hardware. That'll speed things up a lot. So go ahead and click finish. And all right, we've got this thing right here. Now 
we want to run this, we just come over here and click this little guy and it starts up the emulator. And boom, there it is. So this is an actual like phone on your computer, right? Uh, we can sort of run this thing, turn it on and boom, it's starting right up. So cool. It's a little slow. It could be a little slow or a little clunky depending on your computer, uh, but it uh, works pretty good. So let's just wait for a second for this thing to get going. Now, like I said, this is an actual phone. You can install stuff on here. If you want to put Instagram or something like that, Facebook app, you could do that. But for our purposes, we're just going to leave it like this. So now we could come back over here and let's minimize these things, head back over to our app. Oh, <laughs> right. And then come down here and you can see it's already showing up Nexus 6 API. So if we click this, now it's sort of, uh, you know, determined to use that. Same thing, we just come over here to our main.dart, right click and run without debugging. And bang, zoom in just a second, it should pop up right there. But again, like everything in Flutter, it takes a little time to compile and do all the stuff. And uh, so just give it a minute here. And boom, there we go. And there's our app. So you can see it looks just like the web app. Uh, we can click the button and do a thing if we wanna kind of flip this around. There we go. So that's kind of all there is to it. So like I said, we're not going to go through this code. We'll get into this in future videos of what all this stuff is and how we can change this and how we can create our own apps. Uh, but for now, you have a solid foundation of just getting an app up and running, emulating it on an Android phone, also emulating it in the web browser, and uh, pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codenomy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codenomy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.